Praise God. Amen. Good to be in the house of God. How many of you happy to, be, happy to be in church tonight? Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, would you please open your Bibles with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 16. The book of Acts on chapter number 16. Again, I want to thank Pastor Warner. Amen. Pastor King. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> and all the staff. Amen. Here uh, for your faithfulness and um, your exemplarship. Amen. To the entire fellowship and um, all the uh, Tucson Saints, amen, we thank God for you. And my wife and I, amen, we are so privileged and so humbled to be able to come and uh, be part of your service, let alone just, uh, you know, minister, but also to see what God is doing in this wonderful congregation. How many of you know this is the work of God and not a work of man? We thank God for that, amen. I want to declare to you this evening that Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that God is moving supernaturally in the time and the hour that we are living in. We are living probably in one of the most critical times in human history. Before us are things that we are encountering that we've never encountered in the past. Be it politics, be it economy, be it the the uh, social affairs of what's happening tonight. It is just astonishing to see how rapidly this thing is going down. But I want to tell you, amen, that we ought not to be so shocked because the Bible already gave us clarity that Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And we are being set up, amen, we've been set up for a last day's revival. I truly believe that God's going to move on this earth. And I believe, amen, he's going to use his church that we are position for a purpose we've been positioned for a purpose to be amen recipients of god's divine revival i just finished a, a bible study series that i did in my church called do it again lord i started to see amen the jesus people movement and then not just the jesus people movement from but also the revivalist of the pentecostal legacy of the old and I begin to do these studies on every individual and being stirred. And I challenge the church that we ought to be people who are constantly crying out, do it again, Lord, in our midst. And I believe, amen, God is doing and we are going to see, amen, a mind-blowing move of God if we just live for Jesus Christ in these last days of this, amen, hallelujah, life that we are living in. If you can put up that photograph for me this evening we know many of the artists by their most important creations when you look at this people know the ceiling of Sistine Chapel painted by Michelangelo this man amen his paintings the next photograph and you look at this photograph you remind you're remembered about the artist Da Vinci and the Mona Lisa and how many many people have tried to replicate it but each masterpiece reveals something about its creator. That is so true about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because how many of you know our God has created a masterpiece and that is called family. God created family. And his design and the purpose of family is revealed all through the word of God. And there are people here this evening. Our families may not be knowing Jesus Christ. You are probably the only one saved. Maybe you're sitting here tonight. Someone invited you to church. You're watching online maybe. And you have not given your life to Jesus. I believe, amen, that truly that the only way... To reach heaven is through Jesus Christ and through the forgiveness of amen, our sins through him. But isn't it amazing, amen, we are praying for so many people on the streets. We witness to people. We lead people to Christ. We have people coming to the altar. We pray for people in the parks, but whatever. But can I tell you tonight, God is in the business of saving souls. But not just that I believe he wants to save family members. There are people here tonight. You are the hope for your family. You got saved. You had an encounter with God. 
I want to declare to you tonight that God wants to use you to bring in, amen, the wonderful plan of his salvation. And I believe a part of revival that we are going to see in the last days, I prophesy tonight, is a revival of family members getting saved. How many of you claim that tonight in Jesus' name? The devil has too long, amen, come against the divine pattern and the design of God. The masterpiece of God has assaulted family. I believe tonight that God wants to, he has been doing it, but I believe, amen, he's continued to do it in a rapid force in these days to come. The text we are reading in Acts chapter 16 is the story of this Philippian jailer. This man, amen, has an encounter you know, Paul and Silas are in that situation. There's an encounter of the Holy God in that place, the Spirit of God. The Bible says that not only did uh, the Philippian jailer get saved, the Bible says, amen, his family also. And tonight, let's read just a couple of portions. Acts 16, verse 31. So they said, amen, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is, you know, the Philippian jailer asking, these words, amen. Acts chapter 16, verse number 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all those who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes. Immediately he and all, everybody say all. Amazing, amazing. He and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he said food. Amen. Is it amazing? Salvation follows fellowship. Said food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God, not alone, with all his household. I want to tell you tonight, God's plan for salvation is not just you and I getting saved, us and our household. Let's close our eyes and pray tonight. Would you join with me, church, as we pray? Father, we thank you tonight for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us to be here in this place. We thank you for your spirit. Church, would you pray with me? God, we come before you. There are people in our families, God, who desperately need salvation, God. Those who are wavered, those who are lost in sin, God, doing their own thing. God, God, tonight we cry out to you and claim the promise, God, what you did in the Philippian jailer's life. Would you do that in our own family? Families, oh God, that our families will get saved. Wayward children, grandchildren, amen. People, spouses, God, will come together. Broken families, dysfunctional homes, oh God, would be restored, oh God, and healed by the Holy Ghost. Tonight we claim we come against every work of the demonic that has so often come against our families. Tonight we give, amen, uh, we give the devil a notice that he no longer has his hold on our families. We pray for for salvation tonight oh God meet with us and our families in Jesus name and all of God's people said amen I want to minister to you a simple sermon I've titled you and your household because in our text the Philippian jailer gets saved and his household the Bible says there are people here tonight maybe your family is not saved there are people here you're discouraged because of that you've lost maybe a family you have a broken home you live in a wonderful amen house you know having a house and having a home is totally two different things anybody can have a house but it we need Christ to build a home we can have dysfunctional homes, your spouses that are no longer there, fathers who are absent, mothers, amen, children who are in child care, foster care. There could be broken homes. You know, there is no communication between relationships, whatever. And today, you may be sitting here tonight, maybe you are saved, and you're saying, God, when will you touch my family? When will you do these miracles in my home? I want to tell you tonight what God did in the Philippines jailer's life he can do in yours and mine too but we've got to believe in God amen hallelujah there are people here I want to encourage amen as I was writing this sermon those of you who are saved and your family is not saved I want to encourage you tonight do not allow the devil to steal the joy of your salvation 
don't allow because it can be discouraging sometimes amen we can feel the stress and the anxiety and the worry of the uh, a home like that and the devil just wants to steal the joy of your salvation listen tonight we need to keep the joy amen guard the joy of our salvation because that is very critical to reach our families for christ I want to read Romans chapter 15, verse number four and five. All of my verses are from the New Living Translation. Sometimes when things are not going our way with our families and we, you know, we, there are people who you've been praying for many, many years. Maybe you're praying for a loved one. You're believing God. Amen. You're shedding a tear. You're doing everything possible. You've dragged them to church. You've drugged them to church. You've threatened them to church. I don't know what you've done. You've done everything possible, amen, whatever. But still, you may not see sometimes what you want to see. Look at Romans 15, verse number 4 and 5. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for the Lord's promises to be fulfilled. How many of you know sometimes we got to wait patiently? For God's promises to be fulfilled. Verse number five, may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for the followers of Jesus Christ. We have to sometimes wait patiently for God to move in the lives of of our family members and if you are saved i want to tell you tonight we need to stay saved when salvation experience comes to our families the danger is when our families are trying to get saved and we are all messed up and that doesn't work out well the philippian jailer in our text is amazing that he and his household the bible says isn't it amazing if you see in this text the Philippian jailer, you know the story, Paul and Silas is there, they've been thrown into the jail, God comes in, the jail, the prison doors are open, this man, you know, he reaches out, sir, what must I do to be saved? Listen to me, he said, what must I do to be saved? He was not really concerned about his family. He, his question, listen to me, his question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? God's answer goes beyond his question. You and your household will be saved if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know God is a God who always does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think of. He was only thinking, what should I get to do? What should I do to be saved? But God says, if you believe, amen, through the words, amen, spoken through Paul and Silas, believe in the Lord Jesus, you and your household you and your family will be saved in other words god is not just concerned about individuals god is concerned about families too hallelujah isn't it amazing we serve a wonderful god like that psalms chapter 68 verse number five to six father to the fatherless the bible says he's the defender of the widows this is god who's dwelling his holy Verse number six, God places, look at these powerful words. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy, but he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Tonight I want to tell you, there are people out there, amen, who are living in sin and compromise and in rebellion, living in a sun-scorched land, but God, our Father in heaven, listen, he's open to bring people back into the family so that, amen, that loneliness can be destroyed and they can be part of a wonderful relationship. I want to see firstly, very quickly then, on the God of families. Do you know family is at the center of God's plan? God created it. How I many of you know family is God's design? And we've been seeing today, the devil is doing everything possible. He's doing overtime to break families. The design and the blueprint of God's family is being destroyed in front of our eyes today. And the church sleeps. The modern day church sleeps. They're not worried about it. Can I tell you tonight, church, we need to fight for our families. We need to fight for God's design, which is eternal. And we know that families are the foundational building block of society. A strong family, amen, is critical for a strong nation. 
That's why he, the demonic knows if I can destroy the nucleus called as families in a nation, I can break and control a nation. And tonight that's why we see such an assault of families where divorce is rampant. You talk about him in all kind of, uh, you know, sexual immoralities and all of that within the, you know, the blueprint of marriage and family. Why? You question why? Because God's design of family has always been powerful and the devil knows the only way he can dismantle God's plan is through destroying families. It is amazing, right from the Garden of Eden. God always encouraged and blessed families. Adam and Eve in Genesis 128, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. And that is so true even today. Everywhere in the Bible, if you see references to the word family, you can find. Do you know a relationship? We say, God is my father, Abba, father. There's a relationship of a father relationship that Jesus, the son of God, there's a Bible verse that says we are heirs with Christ, the Bible says. Jesus, one place calls his followers brothers and sisters. And you know, if you and I need to know Christ, many times we need to see how family functions so that we can understand what truly God has, amen, created. But when I'm preaching about family, you know, sometimes we, we may think, Pastor, that's so good. You're talking about family. You're talking about how good family can be. But my family is dysfunctional. I do not have a family. I was talking to a missionary a couple of years back in one of the conferences. And he said, I don't even know where my son is. The last time I heard he was living under a freeway in San Francisco. This man and his wife are serving faithfully in our fellowship, living for God, but their family is broken. You can say, you know, you're talking about family, pastor, but I have a broken family. I don't even have a family. Or it's dysfunctional. I don't want to do anything with family. I want to, I want to be a loner. And your Gmail account is loneranger at gmail.com. I, I want to be alone. I, 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 don't, want, I don't want a family. I, I, I actually do not want family. Family has been the worst thing that has happened to me. But can I tell you tonight, that's not how God designed family. God never designed family that way. But see, because how family has been abused, that relationship and the design has been assaulted, today, you know what, people have a wrong view about what is a family. Today, COVID has destroyed the family church. Everybody wants to stay home and have their own church virtually. They don't want to be part of a family. I understand no family is perfect, but sometimes you learn what a family is by seeing a strong, tight family. That family that stays together, prays together. And you know, Philip Rose and everything we know, we thank God for families like that. Mexican families and Indian families like that. You get saved, we fill a couple of rows. Amen. <laughs> thank God for all of that. But then you see other families broken. Wife all alone worshiping God when her husband should have been right next to her. The husband probably there or the children suppose. And you look at that family and you wonder why. I want to tell you tonight. It's how family has been dealt with. That has many times given us a wrong view. About the original design of God's family. See if you want to really know about Christ many times. You have to learn to look at family. You know, families are intimate. They're always very close-knit. That's what God wants us to also be, have a close-knit, intimate relationship with him. Just like families, amen, where rela relationships are always evolving. Do you know that's how our relationship should be with Jesus Christ? We know that Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with the living God. If we treat it as just a religion, a set of rules and regulations, do's and don'ts, that's why we get upset with God and things. But if you treat it as a relationship, God the Father, sometimes we look at that and we get upset because of fatherlessness. 
and the absentee men and how the men and the, you know the, the the fatherhood that has been destroyed in our eyes not just in the nation of america but all around the world sometimes we don't like that but we should never misunderstand that the original plan of god the father the families was a pure and a sacred one but that has been assaulted by the demonic just like families have structure and order that's the same way in our relationship amen god expects us to have structure and order amen you know if you understand family for that matter of fact two essential elements are important in a family in a family there is marriage and there is parenting you know our relationship with christ is in the same image and the likeness of a marriage that he is the groom bright bridegroom we are the bride the bible talks about it's critical and you talk about parenting we are talking about the up and down relationships that we may have in parenting that's so true he is our father in heaven we are his children and to understand god you cannot understand him better unless when you look through the lens and the design of family but unfortunately today before our eyes this very safe place a place where family amen where children grow up in in a wonderful atmosphere and that which needs to be a reflection of god's character is being blown into pieces in front of us i want to declare to you tonight when i got saved i begin to pray god you put a hedge of covering over my family because god is a god of family there are people here tonight i want to encourage you do not get discouraged if your family members are not saved because the days are not too long when amen the bible says every knee shall bow every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord how many of you believe that tonight give god praise what does god know about family don't you know jesus christ himself was born within the context of a family amen god in the flesh we see in the word submitted under his dad his mom earthly mother honoring his parents amen and you know following through their loving direction in a family setting that is how christ was born in this earth and you know what look at luke chapter 2 verse number 52 these amazing words jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with god and man how do you know that happened in the amen the amazing threshold of a family i want to declare tonight that families are still the threshold of god's amen move on this earth every one of us should guard our families pray for our families and believe that we will be an extension of god's character through amen how we build our families and if you are here tonight and there are children listen to me i want to talk to children if you are if your parents are saved you need to thank god that he placed you in a family that is saved because it's god's divine purpose amen that you are in a safe place where you can grow and you can live for jesus and make your own decision to serve god i always thank god god thank you for salvation as i said I came from a nominal namesake Christianity background. But thank God my mother, amen, was the first one who got saved powerfully. Amen, she got saved and she would always, amen, minister to me, say, you know, son, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. My wife is here, Samantha. Her father at the age of 19, you know, his name is Reuben Moses. At the age of 19, he heard, he had a heart issue. He had chest pain. You know, he's coming from a Catholic background. He's got all kinds of talismans on him pertaining catholicism he goes to a healing crusade many many years ago amen in an evangelist not in our fellowship but the early days of revival in india he gets powerfully healed that night 19 years old he says he gives his life to jesus christ amen and he begins to be a radical preacher a lay preacher of the word of god amen and today you know what because of that one man's decision to give his life to jesus christ today amen my wife is a pastor pastor's wife and my wife's brother is a pastor in our fellowship amen serving the living God you and your household how many of you know we don't get we don't get comfortable ah I am saved thank you Jesus but Lord not just me me and my 
household. So let's see, secondly then, on family salvation, quickly. Genesis 6, Noah found favor. We're going to look at a man by the name of Noah. Noah found favor with the Lord, the Bible says. Genesis 7, 1, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat, not just you. What does it say? With all your family listen to me tonight when you listen parents when we are righteous when we want to live when we live for God as Noah finding favor in the eyes of God the ark that we prepare is not just for us but for us and our family Noah you and your family can you just imagine that amen we don't need to you know look at anything else but look at the word of God powerful family salvation Everything else is flushed by the, by the flood. Noah and his family were safe in the ark. That's a picture of family salvation. How many of you can say amen? Hallelujah. Right from the beginning. Look at Joshua chapter 24 verse number 15. These words. If you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Whether you prefer the gods your ancestors served before beyond the Euphrates. Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But look at these words from Joshua, which most of us, amen, we many times we declare in our family prayers, whatever. Hobby Lobby sells these amazing placards. <laughs> As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. How many of you know that's not a cliche? The question is, we may have that plaque, but do we have our family serving God? Yes, pastor, I'm praying, I'm believing God. Yes, we need to keep that, amen, but we also need to do some things. But here you see Joshua, amen, is taking the responsibility. He doesn't consult his family. What do you think? Shall we serve the Lord? Can we put a vote? How many yes, how many no? He takes responsibility. Dads, how many of you know God has placed us to take the responsibilities for our home? Fathers who would rise up and say, you know what, as for me and my home, my family, we are going to serve the Lord. Fathers, God has given you a great privilege to choose salvation, not just for you, but also for your family. Oh, but my children, you know, they can make their own decisions. Oh, listen to me. I understand all of those things, but somewhere as the spiritual authority, you have to rise up and make some difficult calls and say, we are going to serve God. Our family, we're going to serve Jesus Christ. That's what Joshua is doing. Look at Abraham very quickly in Genesis 18, verse number 17. When I read this, when I read this scripture, I was so amazed. Genesis 18, verse number 17. Look at the Bible. The Bible says these words, amen. Should I hide my plan from Abraham, the Lord asked. Look at the amazing thing. Abraham is in such relationship with God that God says, I cannot hide anything from Abraham. Abraham called the friend of God. What, a, what kind of relationship he shared with God that God says, my plans, my secrets, I cannot hide it from Abraham. Why? Why do you think that is? Look at verse number 19. That's what it is. Verse number 19 at Genesis 18. I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families. Look at that. Abraham is going to direct his sons and his families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right. How many of you can say amen? Today, right is wrong. Wrong is right. But we got to say this is right. Directing your families to do right. Walk in that path. Then I will do what for Abraham all that I have promised. God said, Abraham, I'm doing, I, I can do this to you because I know that you will direct your family in this. What a character of Abraham that God says, I cannot hide anything from Abraham. Can you just think about the gravity of this? Can I hide anything from Abraham? Because this man, God was looking for him to lay down some requirements so that he can lead his family into the path of righteousness and do what is right. Job, very quickly. Job loved his family. Children, seven sons and three daughters and one wife. 
Job taught his children the things of God. He was led as a great example. How many of you know we lead in this generation exampleship? They say exampleship is leadership. We need in families, amen, that will set an example. In our neighborhoods, how many of you know we need to set an example? What it is to be a Christian home, a Christian family. Job chapter 1, you see the character of Job. God is bragging about Job to the devil. When was the last time God bragged about us to the devil? Have you considered my servant Job? His exampleship, his integrity with the relationship with Christ. But you know the story, amen, he's such a close-knit family with his children. They're having fellowship, amen, with the family and, you know, they all come together. And Job, you know the story, the text, he would always sacrifice a burnt offering to the Lord every single day for his children. It's a picture of intercessory prayers. Can I tell you, parents, we are called to pray for our children even if they are not with us intercessory prayers get up maybe God some of you here you wake up at three in the morning oh maybe it's God waking you up it's not the pizza last night <laughs> that God is saying get up and pray intercessory prayers for our children I don't know what parents are here you have wavered children listen do not stop praying interceding for your children or your loved one because listen our prayers really matter do you know each and every one of us are a product of somebody's prayer? I am here today because my mother prayed for my salvation. Can I ask you who must have prayed for you? Who could we pray for? Job is interceding for his children. You know the story, amen, things happen, his children, you know, are, you know, they die and all of those things. But at the end, you know what, God blessed Job because of his integrity. His wife, amen, is asking him to curse God and die. He makes those powerful words, for the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you know the story, amen, God blesses him with children again. Seven more children, amen, seven boys and three girls, amen. God blesses him with everything double except except his wife he had the same wife because one is enough amen praise God but Job was an example we need some examples in families how many of you can say amen if you're not there no problem God can help you quickly Rahab amen pastor you've been talking about men so I want to help the ladies a little bit I want to be on good books with the women also Rahab no husband no order in the family disorder you know the story, amen, with the Jericho and the spies. They make a covenant, tie a scarlet thread. All you need to do, amen, is to be in this home. The scarlet thread is a picture of the salvation, the confession of sins. Rahab believed that, you know what, this land belonged to God and she tied that scarlet thread as a picture of her faith connected with works, amen, and she does that and you make sure that all your family is in the same home, the same where, you put the scarlet thread and when, you know, the spies, they come in, you know what, your family will be spared or saved. That woman and her decision not only spared her, but also her family. Family. Maybe you hear there are ladies, you say, you know what, I'm doing it all by myself, Pastor. I want to tell you tonight, lady, woman of God, God is with you. You may be a single mother, you're left to, amen, you know, handle the burden of life. Listen to me, God is on your side. And you just need to say, God, I'm, I'm going to do my best to bring up my family. Listen, like Rahab, if you do what God has called you to do, you're going to see, amen, how God will save your entire family. Isn't it amazing when you see Hebrews 11, 31 and James chapter 2, verse 25, Rahab's name is mentioned in those places. And she comes in the lineage of David and Jesus Christ because, listen to me, God had a plan to also help this lady. The list can go on and on, Cornelius' family and all of those things, but I, want, I don't want to belabor you tonight, but I want to let you know that all through the Bible, God is in the business of saving families. I came thousands of miles to let you know God still wants to save family members. If you're here tonight and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ, you know what? Consider surrendering your life to Jesus Christ because there's somebody who's praying for you, crying out to you, because the only way to make it to heaven is through Jesus and him alone. I closed in finally on God's solution, which is the church family. How many of you know church is a family? Amen. 
There are sometimes, you know, our families, you know, what can be, you know, messed up in the, in, the, in the physical sense. But thank God, God brings us into a spiritual family called the church. The church is not a club. The church is not an institution or an organization. I truly believe church is a family. You know, one of the things that got me, amen, living for God in my family, when I walked into our church in Cockstrong, we were probably a handful of people. When I walked in, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, where are all the people? It's a pioneer church. I came from an established traditional church. A lot of people just come to church, stand up, sing hymns, sit down. That's all they did. Walked into a small church, amen, they're called the Door Christian Church in Cockstown. I remember, amen, walking into that doors and the spirit of God began to get a hold of my heart. But I'm telling you, in that small congregation of 10 to 12 people, I felt like I was a family. There was acceptance. Amen. I was received with love and care and compassion. I felt like I belonged there. I was searching out my wife and I. We were church hoppers. We were looking for so many places. We said, well, let's be part of a bigger establishment. But we will come to the door for some spiritual food. All it took was a week and a half with the preaching of the word of God. We said, heck with the organization. This is where we're going to be. And we started coming to three services every week. Said, this is my family right now. You're here tonight. Church is not this building. Church is this wonderful people sitting here. Ecclesia. We are what we build. It. We are the church the Bible talks about. Because in the last, in Jesus came the first time for sinners. We know that. Second time he is coming for the church. He's not coming for the building. How many of you know this building is not going to go up in the air? It's you and I. Amen. We are the church. We are going to be raptured. Amen. And that's the... That's the reality today. Everybody needs a family here. Everybody needs a church. I know there are tons of churches maybe, but a church that serves the living God. The church that honors and revers the presence of the living God. What we encountered today in this worship service, how many of you know we gave all the glory and honor to Jesus Christ? He is the center of everything that we do. It's no man, no organization, no name. It is nothing but just Jesus Christ and him crucified. But see, today, we need a church family. And I'm glad tonight that God brings us here. And if you're here this evening and you're part of this church family and you, came, you, came, you, get, you got saved, thank God for that. But now, amen, the onus is left on you and I to reach out to those who are still not saved. And we reach out to so many strangers. We thank God for that. Everybody needs Jesus Christ, yes or no? No caste, no class, no color. Everybody needs Jesus, but sometimes we are so we are so focused on those who are lost, who are strangers, and we forget the ones which are closest to us who are not yet saved. That grandma of yours that you love, still not saved. And I'm telling you, they're in a grave danger of hell if they do not give their life to Jesus Christ. Every one of us have to start thinking about reaching out our families. My wife, during the COVID, you don't remember we have a shutdown and everything. She said, you know what? We need to do something for our families. We need to do something so that we can preach the gospel. Online, amen, we reached out to our families. We gave out invitation to join on Zoom. And they all came in, amen. It was like a family reunion on Zoom. And I got up and I preached. Pulled a response for altar call. We had people lift up their hands because you never know what can happen to people at any time. How many of you know we need to see people saved, especially our families? There are people here, maybe you come from dysfunctional, broken families. I want to tell you tonight God understands your pain, your agony. And if you're not saved, tonight there's going to be an altar call. You can be part of God's wonderful family. He loves you. How many of you know God is not a child abuser tonight? He loves you. He cares for you. He understands you. No matter what you're going through. And you could be someone's prayer answered. You know there are people here tonight. You are somebody's pray answered prayer. That we are here tonight because you're living for Jesus Christ. How many parents here tonight you desire that your children would live for Jesus? Think about the empty chair during Thanksgiving. Think about the empty home during Christmas and you wonder just 
God, would you just save my son, my daughter? What a joy it would be if they would be serving God together as a family with you. And I'm telling you tonight, that's not just a dream for some of you. I came to declare to you tonight that all things are possible to him that believes in Jesus Christ. That if you pray and seek out the living God, God will touch our families. They will get saved. I read a story. In 1993, December the 3rd, <clears throat> there was a man by the age of, by, uh, by the name of Wolfgang Drix. This man was watching television in his Berlin apartment. As he was watching his, his television in the Berlin apartment, he con his rent was continuously being paid from his bank account. None of his neighbors noticed that this man was gone. It took their neighbors five years to find out that Dirks had died. The only reason they found out is because he, the money in his bank account came to an end and the, the renter looked into his home. Why is the rent not coming? Because it was automatically deducted to go in there to find the skeleton of this man for five years in a home and on his lap was a TV guide open to December the 3rd, 1993. This man had long gone dead for five years. Nobody even knew about it. That shocked me. You know why I tell that? Because there are a lot of lonely people out there who need a family. They need Jesus Christ. How many of you, the answer to loneliness is not the pleasures of this world. The answer to loneliness is a God-given family. And the church is God's answer to bring these people in. Those who are struggling with suicidal thoughts. Those who are struggling, amen, to, you know, with all these things, with family problems and family issues. I want to tell you, amen, God is a God, amen, who helps us. Put up this next photograph and I want to close with this, amen, story. The photograph that you see next is, uh, amen, the photograph of my great-grandfather and my great-grandmother. During the British time, you can see he had a British hat on. This is my great-grandfather. I heard this is from my mother's side. This man, amen, got saved. You know, he lived for Jesus Christ. And put up the next photograph, amen, if you can put up the next photograph. This, my great-grandfather was also, you know, he was a, a, a reverend, amen, in one of the churches. And he, you know, was... Uh, uh, you know, building there and, you know, it's from, an, they had some British connection and all of those things. And if you, if you have that photograph, if not, no problem. Amen. So why I, why I tell this is because many years back when I was speaking to my mom, she said, you know what? My mom said, my father used to always tell me that your great grandfather would always go and pray that God, would you touch not just my children, even that's him right there when he in an old, old preacher in the 1800s, he would say, not just me, Lord, my inheritance, let there be preachers who preach your word. Here I am in 2023, <laughs> preaching the word of God. Don't tell me tonight that God cannot touch your families. Don't tell me that God is done touching. God will truly touch our homes and our families. There is nothing too difficult for the Lord. You and your household will be saved. Be encouraged, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Thank you for your attention. As every eye is closed, every head bowed. You're here tonight and God is speaking to you. I really appreciate your faithfulness. Thank you for being available morning and night. Before we open these altars, before we do other business, I wonder how many here tonight and your heart's not right with God and you're not part of God's family. You may be part of a physical family. You have a parents, your dad, mom, home. You have a physical family, but you are not in right relationship with your heavenly father. You're not right relationship with Jesus Christ, your creator. And you're here tonight. And your heart's not right with God. While every eyes is closed. Would you for a moment listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Maybe tonight it was you. God brought you here tonight for a reason. You could have been anywhere in Tucson tonight. But you're here tonight. You know why? God's appointed time for you to hear this. 
and you can give your life to Jesus Christ no matter what you're struggling with it could be addictions it could be bad friendships i don't know what you're going through and you know your heart's not right with god you're struggling with things in your life you're struggling with the sins of this world the pressure of this world the climate of this world has put so much of junk into your mind probably you're sitting here confused about so many things the love of god is reaching out to you young man young lady people of all ages those who are hearing this under the sound of my voice here in the church and those watching online i wonder how many tonight you say pastor raj you know what i messed up i need god i don't know how all this is going to happen but i feel and i sense the holy spirit reaching out to me tonight and tonight god is telling you son daughter would you surrender your life to me i want to be your father you are my child i love you i gave my life for you on the cross of calvary i laid it all down even if you were the only person i would have died for you i would have died for you that's the love of jesus christ you don't want to be a man in the world tonight if you are that person you say pastor raj pastor king i want to give my life to jesus christ i don't know all the details how it's going to pan out but all i'm going to do is i'm going to respond to the conviction of god I need a family. I'm lonely, I'm desperate, I'm broken, I'm without hope. I need a change in my life. I want to be born again. I want to repent of my sin. You quickly lift up your hands while nobody's looking around. Please, is there anybody here tonight? Lift it up nice and boldly. The Holy Ghost is here tonight. Anybody? Front to back, side to side. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You say, "Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ." Would there be anybody here under the sound of my voice? God is speaking to you. Not saved, not born again. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are a visitor and maybe you brought somebody, you talk to them. Maybe you are not you know you're saved but you know somewhere you're backslidden. You you slid by you gave into temptation. You're you've gone far away. You're the prodigal son, you're the prodigal daughter. You are in church but you're not. Now you can come to church and not to Christ. You can come to church and not to Christ. And there's a disconnect. I'm just coming because I need to whatever. The Lord is speaking to you tonight. come back to jesus the days where you you were touched powerfully by god you made a decision but somewhere things happened and you know you turned away you got distracted and diverted today god reaches out to you young man young lady people of all ages would there be anybody the sound of my voice if you're online amen and watching you can kneel down wherever you are and you pray the lord would see you amen anybody here lift up your hands quickly front to back side to side amen hallelujah if there's nobody amen i see that hand god bless you sir God bless you. Thank you. So would you get up from your seat? Amen. Would you come forward? I want to pray for you young amen man. Hallelujah. Brother amen. Come. Everybody else is praying. You make your way sir. Thank you. Anybody else while he's coming? Anybody else? God is speaking to you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed tonight. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ through the forgiveness of his forgiveness that you can receive through him. Thank you my brother. God bless you sir. God bless your honesty. I want you to kneel down. Church would you stand with me all across this place? I'm asking everybody to stand with me please. I appreciate you. Amen tonight. Would you please stand with me all across this place? I'm going to be opening these altars but I want to give you a challenge tonight when you come to this altar. If at all possible, if at all possible and if your families are close by if they are far away doing things i understand but otherwise if you are in a family i would encourage you to come to this altar as a family and begin to kneel down and commit things to the lord and if you know families who are not saved members i want you to come to this altar and say god as for me and my household god i want to see if people in my home be saved amen even probably by this year end there will be a supernatural conviction of the holy ghost that will flow amen hallelujah that's how many of you know god's promise for each and every one of us Praise God. Don't be discouraged. Maybe you're discouraged tonight. You come to the altar. These altars are open. You begin to come and kneel down. Make your way to the altar. Amen. I encourage everybody. Amen. We need a visit at the altar so that we can pray and lay a hold of God. God is a God of families. Hallelujah. If your husband and wife come together, kneel down and pray. If you're a family, amen. Children, amen. If at all possible, be around your parents. Amen. Begin to kneel down and pray. Lord, would you cover my family? Hallelujah. Rekebe rila raba shande rebe seke re mandala ma shata hira raba sande for you is for you
For ye, I say this day, saith God, I am the God of the generations. I am the God has spoken to my people. For ye, I love my creation, saith God. My heart breaks at the disaster and the destruction of the wicked one upon my choicest people, saith God. Oh, I wish my children would rise up with a righteous indignation and come against the very thing that the demonic wars against. Have I not equipped you? Have I not strengthened you in the days past? Have I not spoken to my children in the days past and showed myself, manifested myself? This day I say, I look for a generation of people who will stand up for me. And my design saith God, for yea, I make a promise, even as I've done to my children in the days past. For I shall touch every individual in thy home, saith God. Only believe in your lifetime, for you shall see the work of my hands, saith God. For you shall see it, and on that day remember, all the glory belongs to me, for I am working, saith the living God. Let's give God praise. Oh, Rekerebe Shandai. Oh, Rekaraba Shandaraba Basan. Hallelujah. God loves families. When I wrote this sermon, God told me I'm going to touch people. I mean, if you know, we can take and run with this tonight. There are people here tonight. Do not be discouraged. I'm asking you, amplify your prayers. Some of you, maybe you're in disconnection. I want to tell you tonight, call. If they can be called, call them. If they can be invited, met, meet them. Reach out to them. Let's pray for an unusual conviction to fall on them. Unusual, even as we pray right now. I'm going to pray right now for people who are not saved in our families. Children who are wayward, whatever tonight you miss. Maybe separated homes, broken homes, divorce, whatever. And you know, I, we may not understand all the things, but how many of you know our God is sovereign? He sees everything. You and I are like rabbits. We see from a rabbit point of view. How many of you know our God is an eagle? He sees the bird's eye view of everything tonight. He sees the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight. And you know what? We don't get discouraged because maybe beyond that wall tonight is going to be the wonderful opportunity for you to see. Amen. That God is going to touch our families. Isn't it going to be amazing when you see that loved one bow their knee and bawling and say, Lord, I give my life to you. And I'm going to tell you tonight, God wants to do that. How many of you agree that tonight? And if you are here, you want to pray that prayer. Would you close your eyes and would you lift your hands with me? And you say, Pastor, I agree with you. I'm praying for a loved one right now. 
I want you to remember the names of those. Maybe you know some people right now. Remember right now. Remember right now. We're going to lift them up right now. I'm praying for an unusual conviction. Unusual. There, there are people here tonight. I can sense in my spirit. You're saying, I have tried. Why don't you try one more time tonight? One more time. Don't lose hope. Don't quit tonight. Let's pray. Let's pray that conviction, the fear of the living God and the fear and the disgust to sin is going to fall upon them. Amen. The wayward pitch sign, the lonely will be connected to the family. Amen. Let's claim. I want you to say, Jesus Christ, I'm asking you this evening, your help and your intervention. I come before you. Lord, I believe you are the God of the families. God, a loved one and a family member. Lord, would you bring them into your home? Bring them into your salvation experience. I bring, and I want you to name them right now in your heart. To bring that person's name. Name their name right now. Name their name right now. If you have multiple, name them quickly right now. And say, Jesus Christ, tonight... I make covenant with you that I will continue to pray, do everything possible to bring the gospel, the truth, the hope to these, oh God. I will not cease till my last breath to pray for them. And in my lifetime, would you, oh God, save them so that I can see through my eyes and give you all the glory put the devil to shame I come against I come against every work of the demonic every work of hell break its stronghold I plead the blood of Jesus right now upon them God bring conviction bring fear of the living God and Lord I'm asking tonight that you would do this oh God and I will be faithful to give you glory and testify about this wonderful thing today the October the 1st 2023 I make a covenant oh Lord that I will pray to see my loved ones saved in Jesus name give God a mighty praise let's put the devil to shame tonight devil you have no authority over our families the blood of Jesus is upon them we plead the blood we plead the blood the blood has power the name of Jesus keep your hands away every wayward son daughter will walk into your kingdom oh God as for me and my family we will serve the living God oh thank you Jesus thank you God hallelujah God is good how many of you can say amen God is a wonderful God and I want to tell you those of you who prayed please please sometimes you know what we never hear about testimonies be faithful to testify about what God has done. Let's give him all the praise and the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. God is.